Hello everyone, welcome to this quick video where I'm going to show you how you can use this auto building add-on uh, to create your own building style from scratch. Um, I'm gonna go through the process of the basic steps, but feel free to experiment by yourself and test the different functions. You can also have a look at the preset file that I've included where you can see a lot of different building um, that I made for you. And they all have some kind of unique technique and options. Um, but for these tutorials, I, I made this blend scene for you to follow along that already contained the basic uh, building part that we're going to be using. So please open this file and first maybe make sure that you have the uh, add-on installed already and turn on. And then you should see if you press N in the viewport on the right, now this auto building uh, panel here. The first thing you want to do when you create a building would be to create maybe uh, would be to click on the static object button here. When you click on that, it's going to create automatically this kind of cubes and automatically assign on it the different materials that are going to be necessary for the system to work. Is also it also going to be to apply the auto building modifier, but Thanks to these new versions, now you won't be, we won't need to go into this uh, modifier panel anymore and everything will be summarized in this custom window here. We can close all of that for now. But the first thing you want to do when you, for these tutorials, would be to maybe do a little preparations on the building parts. Um, if you look at these windows here, they have this white square. It's because I, I removed the, one of the one of the materials that's needed for the system to work, because when you time I, oh, I import a new starting object, it's going to create a duplicate of the already existing shader in the scene, um, and one of the shaders that is necessary it's the ID boolean that is used to create a hole in the building for your assets. So let's let's go into these windows and doors and then click on the on the empty material slots and just select the ID Boolean one that that went along this this mesh here and maybe to quickly like to quickly assign it to the other one let's select them and just do like uh, control L and then link materials so now this ID Boolean is also applied to all the other windows and doors um, but when you create your own building you won't necessarily already have the spaces Set up like that. I already just prepared for you uh, the ID boolean assignment. All right, let's set up this building. So when you click on the building, uh, if it has the geometry modifier on it, the menu will open here and show you different options. By default, it has nothing and only some a gray shader apply on it. So what we're going to do first, maybe it's to set up quickly the, the different options uh, that we want to be using later. So we're going to maybe remove this, this gray shader, default gray shader, and apply uh, the wall bricks, maybe the wall plaster for this one, and then the wall brick for that one. These two slots are basically the two kind of walls that you're going to be using to create your buildings. I call this empty wall A and empty wall B is just to be able to have two different kind of walls in, inside of one of the one buildings. Um, so here I'm gonna have the one on plaster and one is gonna be brick. And then for all the different wall A, B, C, D, A, they are basically matching the shader that you're gonna see here. So every time we have the wall A assign one of the face, it's gonna be using one of the object from the collection that you're gonna put here. So let's set up the collection first. I'm gonna do like that to keep it simple. I'm gonna put the doors into the wall A, windows A into wall B, C and D. And then if you want to add more different kind of windows and doors or whatever you want to put on the face, there's always room for here. Um, let's see the crease and roof and extra after. So like I was saying, if uh, you go into the face mode and select one face, 
By default, the empty wall A is assigned, so it's going to be using the wall plister A, like we put here. But if I select the wall A material and assign it, now it's going to spawn one of the, the objects that is in this collection, which here is one of the doors that we have here. It's going to just randomly pick, pick one of the objects and put it there. By default, the object will be spawned in the center of the face. So be careful also of where you put the pivot point of the object. Like for instance, the pivot point here is in the middle. If I move the object with the pivot point higher, now the object will be lower from the center of the face. But in our case, it's okay. What we're going to be doing is add a subdivision in the middle and then lower these edges down so the bottom of the door touches the ground. Because I added a subdivision, now this face and this face both have the ID wall A uh, materials. So maybe for this top one, we can like select all of these faces and then instead of having doors here floating, we can maybe assign the wall B materials, which is gonna spawn the windows. So select wall B, assign, and ta -da, now you have windows appears in all of these faces. I'm going to add some subdivisions, just a little bit, Maybe like that. And because our, our building now has three, three doors here, it's a bit, a bit strange. So maybe we're going to like select these faces and then reassign the original empty will be but actually maybe for the bottom part of the building i'm gonna have i want to use different kind of materials not just this plaster so maybe i'm gonna select all of these faces there and assign the other kind of material empty will be if i do that now it's gonna be using this second material wall brick but there's this issue happening with this door this is when I'm gonna introduce you to the different options that you have in all of this wall. So if I open up the wall A uh, option settings here, one of the options you can do is use wall B materials. If you turn this thing on, it's gonna switch between using the first one to the second one. This is gonna be useful if you want to have some of the, the windows or door or whatever to use the other materials. I can do the same thing actually for maybe uh, the Windows C, I believe they are the C one, like the small windows here, they are in the, actually no, they are in the collection B. All right, let's go back to this. Let's, let's assign all of this. I can do that up, select everything. Assign uh, what Windows B will be in the wall C. It's a bit confusing because the letter doesn't match. <laughs> Uh, C, assign, and then in this, I'm gonna turn on the use wall B materials. Now, they also have this wall brick shader. Mm -hmm. Actually, these windows are a bit too low, so maybe what I can do is select them, the original object, and then move them up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna add another subdivision maybe for this floor level. And voila. Okay, so let's see the other options that we have. On the, do we see be Windows A settings here, will be. Okay, so we have different options. One of them is use Boolean, which means that if you turn this thing on, it's going to basically replace Remove the face that's originally there and replace it with the object. This could be useful sometimes. If you turn this thing on, uh, off, I mean on, <laughs> it's going to put the object on the face and then dig a hole in it to have this kind of effect. Now you can see the inside of the, of the building because on the original, on your original object that's here, I modeled the inside of the room. I can go even deeper if I wanted. And I have these cubes here that are assigned previously the ID Boolean. So basically the system is looking at what's have this ID Boolean and use this shape 
to to dig the hole and not use this as a render is dealing with it after mm -hmm. using this method you can you can really like, create this kind of negative space and have the feeling of depth all right use what will be material we already see the seed speaks for itself the density will like randomly remove the windows if you want to create variations for Unix buildings, you can do that too. The offset will push the windows in and out. And the deform will take the windows and, and the object and stretch it to fit the face shape. Um, so it makes the windows with a weird shape because it's basically stretching and trying to fit as much as they can the, the original face that was there. To compensate that, I added this inset settings here that will basically like scale down the original face, like if you add an inset, and so you can have like small windows. As you can see here, there's an issue with the boolean, so maybe what we can do is also maybe offset the windows inside so the boolean doesn't cut too much. But because this windows is trying to fit the shape of the face, what you can do now is maybe in the sculpt mode or edit mode and then it will allow you to to sculpt and then deform your building as you want and stylize it a little bit you will see in real life especially for this kind of building nothing is perfectly aligned and and symmetrical and i believe this kind of effect adds a lot of realism to it and can be helpful also if you want to stylize it on the other hand, I don't really want to bake this um, deformation like that because it becomes difficult if you want to change the, the design later and make things a bit more aligned. So what I like to do maybe is to add a modifier before, a displace modifier, I put it before and create a texture quickly, maybe add a marble one. And you can see this, this texture now is kind of pushing all the vectors in different locations uh, and then reduce the strengths. And now you can have this kind of subtle variations in the, in the shapes. That adds a lot of reason to me. But for now, I'm gonna turn off the deform and maybe bring back this setting to zero, which I don't really mind here. Uh, when you don't turn on the deform, the object would just be spawned in the middle. It won't have any transformations, as you can see. All right, let's talk about crease now. The crease are a bit different and I mean, they work the same, but they're going to use the crease attributes to spawn an object on along the edges or even extrude it following a profile. So let's set up quickly this before showing toy works. Uh, you will see there is like three different creases you can do horizontal, vertical, and top edges here. Basically horizontal would be everything horizontal vertical everything vertical <laughs> but top edges is also horizontal but they will basically be prioritized over the horizontal one every time it's at the top of the building so basically all the edges that are here will be using the top edges um quiz and then the other one over there and there they're going to be using this one mm -hmm. and this is useful if you want to have your building to have some kind of like ledges or trail that or support pieces along here actually here i'm going to be using it to spawn some decals and some leaking texture so let's do that let's select object household um leaking decals here you can see like the building that was important in the beginning already had creases so the objects start to appear i'm going to turn off the displays for now uh, so now you can see the object appears along the edge. So let's go through through the attributes quickly. The random seeds works as expected. The height will actually <laughs> here just stretch the object uh, on uh, along his own axis. I mean, his length. It's called height because it's the same setting I'm using for the vertical one. But um, you understand it works. Thickness is actually. It's like the side of the edge because here it's a plane is only in one direction. It will be also uh, the depth. Um, let's go back to one. 
the Z of, of, of set will rise this thing up. So imagine you want to do some kind of fence or something like that on top of the building, you could be doing that. And then the random position will just like randomly move them. If you want to have the, this for your building, the spacing will be just the number of repetition you have. If you increase this number, there's more space between each uh, each instances. So if you reduce this number, there's less space and then more instances. Problem is, as you can see, when it reaches the edge of the building, it's not following this anymore. Uh, there's some kind of like overlap happening here. To do that, to fix that, maybe I'm gonna increase it a bit. I uh, added the deform options that will basically deform whatever object you have along the, the edge. Now they're a bit more, they blend a bit more easily now. Let's turn this off for a second because I want to show you another feature which is this fit mode. The fit mode basically will stretch the object and then make them not uh, penetrate each other. If I turn on the deform and use the fit mode, all the, the different objects will be touching each other. So just to show you here, this is with the deform and fit on. If you scale this, you can see the, the object as it goes through the ang angle of the building, it's it's bending. And if you turn off the fit, now there's a gap. The object will still be deformed at the at the angles at the corner. I mean, but now you're gonna have to have a smaller from a smaller distance if you want less gap. But at least they are maybe they remain they maintain the original shape. Just quickly, actually, uh, the other option is to center on the edges. So this thing will spawn one object for each edges at the center, and then if you turn on the fit, it's gonna stretch it to fit the edge. So now the spacing doesn't doesn't work anymore, but um, can be useful sometimes. All right. So the horizontal and vertical edges uh, works actually the same way. But one thing you can do in all of them is also to have an extrude instead of spawning object. To do that, you're gonna be, have to use the profile settings. So let's set up this one. Uh, let's profile here and. Maybe I want to use this ledge object A for this one. So the way it works is if you select your edges and add some crease. By the way, you can use this one, this setting here, min crease, which if you select edges and increase, is gonna set up a crease value. Usually this value you find it here. If you go to item and um, increase, well, every time you select an edges, you have this setting here, but uh, I added the options here as well. It's the same one. So if I increase, this value and if it's not zero, you can see it's spawning objects along these edges, the same way that the top edge was working. Except here I put I plug it something else, this kind of like metallic bar. And as the value of the crease increase, the size increase. So you can add different size and different detail size mm -hmm. uh, depending on this value on your building. But as when it passed the 0 0.5 value, it disappear. And now it's gonna be using what's stored in the profile collection here. Like as, like as a word here, crease above 0 0.5, we use the profile. And if crease in inferior 0 0.5, it's gonna use object. And same thing here, when your ledge increase, when the crease <laughs> increase, like the size change, um, I'm gonna do the same thing here and having the value like that. Maybe this one can be smaller if you want. Uh, if you want to increase all of the extrude together, you have also a multiplier here. Give you a few. I'm gonna go back to one. This one, I want my object. 
here we have the profile extreme material. So uh, this one is gonna, what kind of material are you gonna be using to do this extrude here? So I'm gonna maybe use the same wall brick here. One thing setting I didn't mention is the collection order. So basically by default, it's gonna randomly pick whatever is in the connection object. But if you click this one, it's gonna like spawn them one by one. So you can keep them order and have a regular pattern if you want. But here I don't need it. Uh, yeah, and then for the vertical one, let's do this quickly as well. Uh, I have a corner, stone corner here I'm gonna be using. You can also use a profile if you want. But here I'm gonna select the four corners of my building and increase the value to maybe yeah, this amount. So right now, right, you can see the fit is turned on. So it's like stretching some pieces along here. Uh, if I turn it off now that the piece are like spawn along the edge and then it can change the, the spacing again. I don't want to get more stones. The only difference with this one, it doesn't have the deform one. It's not that necessary because it doesn't do a, um, like a loop. It's not a closed uh, circuit. So there's no deform sitting here, but the rest is, is the same. You can make it that higher and stuff like that. You can change the thickness if you want or not. Increase the thickness like that. Yeah, but that's all for the quizzes. Uh, let's move on. Roof. The roof material is also different. So first thing you want to do maybe it's to set up what kind of shader you want to use for the parapet. Um, so I guess use the wall brick, uh, roof materials. So you're gonna use the plaster for now, but I'm gonna change this later. So basically the parapet would be like this edge here. You can change the thickness, you can change the height, uh, the overall height and just the parapet height if you want. But in our case, I want my building to have a slope roof. So I'm gonna change this roof materials to roof tile. Um, <laughs> this is very ugly, but don't worry. We're gonna cover this with tiles later. So you have to do, to do that, you have to go to the slope settings. And maybe first thing would be select the faces of your of your top. So select all of these faces here and then apply the roof slopes shader. When you do that, it's like removing removing the parapet, it doesn't need it anymore. And then because this roof tile is a uh, collection is empty, nothing is spawned, but as as soon as you put the roof tile collection in it. It's gonna scatter some of the tiles on top of it. Then if you select these edges and, oh, no, sorry. If you select these edges and then raise them, now you can see the, the roof tiles are appearing and then are automatically scatters on the surface. Actually, you can see now that these edges doesn't make sense. Like the leaking texture is oriented uh, perpendicular to the edge, so it's not that realistic. I'm gonna I'm going to remove them for now. Okay, let's see the setting for the roof. First, you have the crease spacing. Crease spacing. So basically, if you have some crease on the, the roof, it's gonna spawn some of the roof tiles along it, and then you can choose the spacing here. The coverage will basically extend your wall a little bit further if you want to have something a bit offset. Then you can add like random translation, rotation and scale, uh, the usual thing. But the thing you want, you may want to do is to use the grid, grid, grid settings. By default, you're going to be using the randomness, but the grid can be useful sometimes. Basically, it's going to take your ties and then align them along the roof as much as you can. It's a bit buggy sometimes, but it does the job good enough for me. Here you can choose the density of your grid. 
So by default, if you use zero, it's gonna be it's gonna be okay. But you can see there's there's some gap happening already. So I'm gonna return on and increase a little bit until something is covered. You can have a little bit of random uh, translation and rotation to give some variations. We we'll say maybe that one is more useful. I'm gonna reduce the coverage a little bit. You can see there's, there's some gap here happening and this kind of problem happens quite often actually. You're gonna have to play with the position of the tiles. Uh, have to play with the position of the tiles. Um, so like if I lower them and they were going to be lower on the roof. Maybe I can put them slightly higher here. It won't be perfect, uh, but you're going to have to be patient with that. <laughs> the last one, it's the modular. This one is beta. But let me show you. So I made this, this building just to demonstrate how it would work, but it's not totally working yet. Um, I mean, it's working, but not, not the best. So basically the way it works is you select the face of your building, of your roof, which looks like that. And if you have the modular roof turned on, it will spawn one of the pieces that is inside of this collection, which are these pieces here. And a bit like Lego, the system is gonna use one or the other depending on the location in the face. So if you move this thing like that and add some subdivision, it's going to automatically add the piece in between to fill the gap and maintain the shape. Uh, it's not working that much if you go like that. If you look at from top view, you can see that there's some bending happening here. The, the roof doesn't doesn't have a uniform offset when there's angle happening. If I increase the coverage, you will see that only the corners that are outside are sticking out, not the corner inside. So that's why the function is still in beta, but maybe it could be useful for some other thing. The last one will be the, the collection, the dressing collection. So if you want to have object on your roof, you can choose in there, choose in here. I'm gonna use roof dressing. You can control the density in the seed and if you want to include the slope or not. So I'm gonna increase the density a little bit until I have something. I can use the seed to try to find better options. Maybe the density is too much and it's just have to find the correct seed. Yeah, maybe that one is okay. And the last part would be the extra. So for the extra, we have the foundation, which is this piece of geometry that is below the building. I put them here in case your building is not like flat on the ground. At least you have something below that's, that avoid having floating building in the future. But you can turn this off like if you put zero. Here you can choose the, you can choose the shader that you want to put for that. Uh, you also have the facade, facade dressing collection. Basically, if you plug something here, it's gonna uh, scatter some object on the facade. I don't think I have, yeah, no, I don't think I have anything. Let's create one quickly. I'm gonna create a new collection. Got this facade, just to show you. I'm gonna put a monkey in it because the orientation is like along, along the face of the building. I guess I have to rotate this thing like that. Apply the rotation and the scale. And here choose the facade. So by default, I guess the settings are not correct for this one. You're gonna have to play with the minimum distance between the object, let's say maybe two. If you lower this number, it's gonna get more and more object. Actually, let's go even lower just to demonstrate how it works. Here you can choose the seed. 
And here you have two, two parameters, the minimum height position and minimum maximum height position. Basically, it's this gap that you can see here and there. Um, imagine you want to scatter some of objects like air conditioning units or lamps or whatever stuff you want to attach to the facade. Maybe you don't want them to appear too close to the ground. So you, you cannot play with the settings if you want to have it starting from here. And same for the top one. Like if you want to keep your object in between, uh, only for the first floor, you can maybe do that. Let's increase this number again. And then, yeah, you can play with that until you have something. This is how the thing will work. Then the support collection, this one, uh, same thing. I don't have anything set up here. But basically, if you have a, an, a part of your building that has this kind of thing, like overhanging, I call this, uh, in a sense that it's above the above the position of your origin, everything that's floating, basically. Right now, nothing is spawned under it because there's nothing in the support collection. But if I used uh, the same thing, let's create quickly something. Okay, I make this two building to demonstrate how it works. Uh, because there's two kind of pillars you can have. The first one, by default, we'll be using this kind of pillar, which are vertical. So I'm going to click that, select support collection. Oh, I have to apply this rotation. Yeah. So as you can see, it's going to spawn uh, one of these objects at each vertex point that you have for the face. So if I select that, move it down up. If I have if I have some subdivisions, it's gonna create a pillar in between. You can artificially add the number of pillars by increasing the support pillar subdivision here. If you want more density. But the other options that you have is fit edges. But if you do that, it's gonna to take whatever object you have in this and stretch it to to the form to deform it uh, until you touch the ground. Although, because of the the technology behind is a bit different, uh, you're gonna have to use an object that has a different orientation, such as this one, the same one that we use for the face, basically. That's why I created these two different objects. So I'm gonna select this one, this collection, and put it there instead. And now you can see that each this object is like spawn under the, each face is here and automatically touches the ground. So if I raise this thing up, you can see it's deforming the object to, to always touch the ground at some point. Here, when I raise it high too high, it disappears because it considers that this face, it's not anymore bottom face, it's more like a side face. So you have to pay attention to that. By using this technique, you can have like maybe some kind of metallic structures or something that a bit more organic. If it's like wood pieces that will be deformed to to create maybe like stairs or something less flat, this is how you would do it. But yeah, this is this is your building. Um, if you want to if you want to create quickly variation, you can just like maybe duplicate it. If your wall plaster ha is set to have a random color, you will get a different color all the time. But the power of this is that you can really quickly just decide to maybe this one will be using uh, Windows C. So I have to apply this one. Maybe I don't want to have that many windows. I'm going to reduce the density. Um, maybe actually this one is like doesn't have these edges like that. And uh, you see, this way you can really create building quickly. Maybe that one actually was different doors at the bottom. So to do that, I'm going to just open the door setting and change the seed. So it give me a different doors. Also, maybe that one, I don't want to use this second wall. So I'm going to do that, uh, go to the B and then no C and remove this one. So the plaster wall is also assigned here at the bottom. Thinking crazy with this, maybe the roof have a different Tracing seed as well. That one. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah. Let me just show you quickly also the auto base settings, uh, auto base modifier, I mean. 
if you click on it, it's going to create this gentleman, which is basically a system that will create automatically the base that you have, that you have to do manually usually, but this one created it automatically. So if I select this building and select this one, go in the modifier and click on the little arrow here down there, copy to selected, it's going to copy the setting of this building and apply it to that. And then because, because I, I have, I'm using the same, um, ID materials, it's can, it can read it and, and apply the same, uh, window and same look. Although you have to do some little bit of modification in the default settings for these buildings. For instance, you can see there's too many windows. Basically, you have to go into this, uh, in the settings here. If you scroll down into measurements, you will see you can change the ground floor height, floor height and unit lens. Basically, it's like how, how tall you want each floor to be. So right now there's too many floor, which means that my floor is too small. So I'm going to increase this number maybe to five. And now each floor will be five. Maybe it's still too, too small. Maybe six. Six is there's not enough distance. So maybe what I'm going to do actually is just increase the height of the building. The power of this is that you can change the seed of the building to get variations easily. Um, you can also turn on this option, random scene per position, which means every time you move, it's going to give you a different result. Sometimes bugs still happen though. You're going to have to play with the settings and maybe like apply this one and modify it by hand. You can change the ground floor height. Maybe I want this thing to be a bit slower, slower. You can have like random scale variations, random height variations. Um, you can even change the roof style. Right now it's using this kind of like double slope one. You can have one slope, two slope. Although you can see here now the density of the roof doesn't work anymore. You can have to go over there and then we increase this number. Like that, and then the windows are just a bit too small, so we're gonna have to increase this a little bit, like that. But once you have one setup, like <laughs> you can create a lot of variation now easily. Okay, one one thing I added also is the make sure that the materials that are used uh, da, 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 that are used here, you can set them up with this menu over there. Make sure that the, the these names are matching because sometimes you have like, you can have some duplicates if you import another building or something like that. Um, so if you use the auto building add-on, I mean modifier after and then it doesn't work, maybe it's because it's looking for the wrong shader here. So please make sure this is set up correctly here. But yeah, that's all I think. If you want to apply your building at the end, the way to do it is just to select it and click realize instances here and then apply modifier. Now your building is just one object. Then you can export it uh, if you want. I would advise maybe to, to, to bake it using the simple bake add-on. Uh, I added the tutorials in the documentation if you want to see how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. But yeah, that's all. Thank you.